Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you, Mr. Gupta, for the introduction. Um, I'm Prashant Modi, President of Great Eastern Energy Corporation. We are the leading coal bed methane company in India. Um, in my presentation, I'll touch upon coal bed methane, a little bit of what we do, and what the Indian scenario is in the shale, and how uh, the global shale revolution is uh, trying to sh take shape in India. Coal bed methane, I'm not sure if you're aware, is very different to conventional gas, even though the product is the same. Uh, these are shallow wells, still about 1,000 meters, producing anywhere between 300 to 500 MCF per day, uh, and you have drill hundreds of wells in each block. The good part is there is never a dry well, as long as you drill where the coal is. This is the difference. Conventional gas uh, peaks in the beginning and drops sharply. Um, CBM is the other way around. Shale gas, even though it's unconventional, produces like a conventional gas. In CBM, you put a pump in to extract the water. As and as the water pressure reduces, uh, the gas production increases. We have currently two blocks licensed to us. One is commercially under production. We have 21.3 million cubic feet of gas in production every day, uh, which is expected to go up to 100 odd million cubic feet in the next five to seven years. Second block is in the south of India, uh, which we got about three years ago. We are still awaiting some final clearances, and then we will start uh, operations on that. We are a fully integrated company into upstream, midstream, downstream. We have um, our own drilling rigs, we have our own compression, we have our own pipelines. So from drilling until the burner tip of the customer remains under our control. Uh, briefly on the two blocks, running in south, we have 2.4 TCF of gas in place. Um, 156 wells have been drilled and under production slash dewatering. And another 144 wells we will drill in the next four to five years. Manarguli block, about one TCF of gas as for the government. We will start work once the approvals are received. Uh, last year, ONGC had come out with a tender for their CBM blocks. We had participated and bid in that and we have been given a 25 interest in one of their blocks, which is right next to our current producing block. We have gas gathering of about 32 million cubic feet installed and functioning, and a CNG supply agreement with Indian Oil and Bharat Petroleum, through which we service about 2,000 vehicles in our region. This is the pipeline. This is one of the biggest challenges, I think, in India and this part of the world, that no delivery infrastructure or evacuation infrastructure exists. I think for shale gas, this was one of the key factors in it being a success in the U.S. because of the national grid that exists. As I was telling you, shale produces its peak in the first year. I think in the first year, between 50 to 70 percent of the production comes out. So if there is no pipeline, the well is gone. In CBM, in the first year, we will probably get one or two percent. So once we found the gas, we made this pipeline. It's a dedicated network. Um, servicing our customers and it carries only our gas. Um, we are uh, very conscious about the environment. We are, the, I think, the only CDM company in India, if not in Asia, to be accredited with all the three standards. Uh, we use the best technology that is available in the world. Uh, we use compact rigs. We started doing deviated drilling from the same pads. Um, we use all biodegradable chemicals as is approved by the EPA, even though we are not obligated to. And we connect our well sites before they start producing to the gathering station to avoid um, or to minimize gas flaring. We have a big CSR program which is very critical in India. Um, we, have, we conduct it on a bi-weekly basis and we have already benefited close to 40 to 50,000 people. We were termed as the best CSR company in West Bengal last year, a few of the pictures of CSR. Now getting to shale and CBM, uh, and CBM in India started on our behest. Uh, we were the first company that was given the license um, and we are the first ones to commercially start production in 2007. 20, 33 blocks were given, 11 have already been relinquished and I think another 10, 11 will be relinquished. Um, ONGC has found out its blocks, hopefully within the, by the end of this year, um, work would start on them. CBM, the good part is it is not like a conventional contract. There is no cost recovery, hence there is no government 
confusion and involvement of what we do or don't do. It's a simple royalty and PLP contract. So what you sell, you pay a percentage to the government. And it is the pricing is arm's length free market pricing, which has become a hot issue in India. Um, but the contract is very, very clear that you can sell at whatever price the customer is willing to give you. On the contrary, the government approves a minimum price below which if you sell, you will still pay royalty on that uh, approved price. And if you sell higher, you pay uh, royalty on the higher price. Shale gas, there has been a lot of talk uh, in India. Uh, I think it is only talk um, for the only reason which I mentioned initially that India does not have the pipelines apart from in a few regions in the west and maybe a couple of regions in the south. ONGC has done some work in, um, in the Damodar uh, Valley, which is near our block, and they claim to have found 50 TCF of gas, which uh, I have no way of confirming or commenting, because I think with one, L, one, one or two wells to say that you've got 50 TCF is slightly difficult. Schlumberger made an estimate of 600 to 2100 TCF. Anyways, the policy is being formulated, it will be a royalty contract, um, but the challenge is two, one is land acquisition and one will be how do you sell it. Um, in shale you need 20 to 40 acre spacing, um, huge amounts of water and also once it starts producing there should be an evacuation infrastructure. So gas supply demand is not an issue in India. People have been trying to focus on what is happening in the US and this and that. Um, but people forget that the US prices declined due to market force. LNG is still being imported at between 18 to 20 dollars. Last year in March, uh, some power producers in Andhra Pradesh imported spot LNG at 30 dollars. Um, anyway, still long term is 15, 16, 17 dollars is easily coming into India. Indian capacity is increasing of LNG. Uh, I think currently at about 15 odd million tons, going up to 50 in the next three to four years. LPG is at about 41 dollars. I think it has come up. This is as of January. I think in February it is down to now 37 or something, but still very high. Unconventional gas resources, as you can see, this is a projection as per the IEA. They they feel that it will become a major part of the world energy supply mix going up to about 32% in uh, 2035. India is expected to be one of the largest producers of unconventional uh, because they are, apart from CBM, they are expecting that there will be a lot of shale uh, found in India. Unconventional hydrocarbon development is extremely different to conventional. People think it's, CBM is an easy play that you find the gas you will produce. But you realize, three, like in our case, 300 wells will give us 100 million cubic feet. If you drill a conventional well slash offshore well, each well can give you 200 million cubic feet. You have wells, you have internal pipelines, you have external pipelines, you have to do workovers. So it's easy to find, but there is a, each well produces slowly and in time. So scale of reserves is very important. Geography, the landscape where you're working is important. The technology that you use is most critical, especially the fraction technology um, and the infrastructure. Pipeline access has to be there uh, for it to succeed. Any any natural gas grid to succeed. Land acquisition uh, is a sensitive process. Uh, be acquired directly, which is the best way. Technology is scarce in this part of the world, especially in unconventional energy, be it CBM or shale. There is limited distribution network in the cities, as is in other uh, cities in the US, etc. And in this part, uh, a majority of the gas in the US is used for heating, which is, if you've seen the Henry Hub in the last month or so, has increased by a dollar due to the severe weather conditions, which is not the case in uh, our part of the world. Now, this, I think, for India, this is true, I think, for this part of the world. The people are trying to, the regulatory environment is sort of providing a, if I can call it a disincentive to any investor to come in to here. They say, well, if I produce in Qatar, if I produce in Bangladesh and I export it to India, I'll get $15, $20. But if I produce in India, I have to 
sell it four bucks an hour will go to nine dollars the Rangarajan formula for, for new contracts um, that is not going to be applicable to us because we have already a minimum price approved but due to all this confusion people are shifting their investments outside I think the Rangarajan formula will provide a boost that in the next four to five years people are seeing a market price coming in uh, this is what I was mentioning about the US gas prices everybody talks of Henry Hub, Henry Hub, Henry Hub, but nobody looks at how Henry Hub came to what it is today. So when it was big, there was free market arms length pricing. If I sell at a higher price, the consumer will not buy if it is not beneficial to him. I, I will make more money and so will the government because they get a royalty. So I, all three are winners. So in, I think for the shale gas industry in Asia, if they adopt the model of the US, Pro, say hypothetically the pipeline exists, I think it can be a big success. But the policy has to be right, policy has to be investor friendly, otherwise people have many options in the world today to go and invest anywhere they want. Um, if you try to control them at every stage, no foreign company will come in and invest where you need billions of dollars to develop this gas resource.